I'm not going to be able to see the chat. So if you have a question at some point about anything you're seeing, uh, you're going to have to be brave and unmute yourself and uh, ask it out loud so that I can respond to you. So here we go. I'm going to close up my little face there. Um, so uh, everybody, this, this part of the meeting is being recorded. Please say hello to your future selves. Future selves, please say hello to your past selves. We are all now time traveling. Let's talk about chance versus strategy. Can you guys see this? Remember, I can't see the chat. So somebody unmute, make sure you can see the entire presentation. Let me know. One brave person. It's visible. Fantastic. Thank you, whoever that was. Chance versus strategy. In most games, there are two ways that gameplay progresses, through chance and through strategy. Look at these fantastic representations of chance and of strategy. And this is actually a painting, you guys. Check that out. See, they signed it down at the bottom there. Um, see? J. Claff, 2010. That's a painting. And uh, here's strategy, you know, it was all this strategy uh, design graphics. Um, chance has to do with randomness or luck, although the two things are not the same. Randomness means that any outcome within a given set of parameters could happen at any point during a designated time. When you roll a regular six-sided die, die, by the way, is the singular of dice. When we say dice, we are talking about more than one die. What are die? Anyone? I can't see the chat. You got to unmute. A six-sided cube with that can be rolled. Yes, a six-sided cube. So, uh, sometimes die have more than six sides. Sometimes they have fewer than six sides. But standard die have six sides, each one with different numbers of dots on them that represent uh, different numbers or values for each side. Um, and when we talk about one of these objects, we say die. And when we talk about multiple of these objects, we say dice. I don't know why that is. It, ha it probably has to do with uh, language stuff. When you roll a regular six-sided die, there is, a, there is a one in six chance that any particular side will come up. And the side that comes up is determined more or less at random. If you shuffle a standard deck of playing cards really well and draw a card at random, it means that you may get any one of the 52 cards in the deck by random chance. The internet has many random number generators that can make interesting gaming tools. By the way, I found, uh, I found a few last year. Luck, on the other hand, is the randomness that a player kind of stumbles into and implies that the random outcome is in the player's favor. For example, if you're playing blackjack and you are dealt a jack and an ace, you have been dealt a lucky hand by random chance, right? Strategy, on the other hand, means that a player has attempted to determine or manipulate the outcome of play deliberately with some broader goal in mind, often anticipating things that may happen that would pose challenges in the future or that might pose advantages in the future, right? You're trying to gain an advantage with strategy. You're trying to get around obstacles. See the, see the, um, see the graphic here? Getting around obstacles, gaining an advantage, planning, right? That's strategy. Many of the most popular games are played with a mixture of chance and strategy. Uno, backgammon, almost all card games except for War, Monopoly, and even Tetris are all great examples of games that combine chance and strategy to make gameplay both enjoyable and challenging. Think about this. What is the chance element in Uno? The draw of the card. Exactly, yeah, the cards get shuffled, right? And, uh, and you hope that you get a good hand, but sometimes you don't get a good hand. Sometimes you get a terrible hand. There's nothing that you can do about it. But there's also an element of strategy, right? Because you're choosing which card you play according to which cards other people have played. What about backgammon? Anybody here play backgammon? Any backgammon players? 
Oh, backgammon's a good one. You guys should all learn how to play backgammon. Uh, it's a very old kind of gambling board game. Uh, I think it originated in the Middle East a long time ago. Uh, Monopoly, most of us probably know. There's a good element of chance in Monopoly, and there's a good element of strategy in Monopoly. Who, who, who among us knows the best uh, example of how Monopoly contains chance? Where's the chance in Monopoly? The amount of spaces you move. Which is determined by what? The dice roll. Exactly, the dice roll. But there's also another element of chance in Monopoly, right? Anybody know what it is? The paper that you get, like the money. The not the money, but let's say you get community chest or chance, right? Both of those decks are shuffled before the game, right? So the the card that you get is determined in a somewhat random order, and uh, it's it's compounded by the fact that. You have to roll a dice to get to the to the space that allows you to pick up the card. In Tetris, there is some chance, which is uh, generated by a computer, right? It's computer-generated randomness in terms of what uh, Tetris block Tetris block configuration it's going to throw at you next. Anybody here ever play Tetris? Oh, yeah. yeah. I have this really old machine. Thing at home where like it doesn't use any batteries it works if you put in the sun whoa that's crazy you have a solar powered tetris game that's fantastic so yeah so tetris you know the blocks fall and you have to make them fit together so that there's no gaps and then every time you get a row with no gaps it deletes the row and and you're trying to get rid of all the blocks and it goes faster and faster and throws harder and harder combinations of pieces at you. So the chance is you don't know what block is going to come next. And the strategy is you can you can control where the block goes and what angle it's at. Um, and there's also a part of it that is predictable. You know that they're going to speed up. You know what configuration of blocks are already down in your Tetris gameplay area. right? So you can kind of work around that with your strategy. And then you have most card games that are a combination of random chance and strategy. So war is a really bad example of that because war in the way that it's traditionally played is entirely random. You could have two uh, uh, pigeons playing war against each other and their game would be as interesting and as random as a game played between two people. But uh, most other card games contain a combination of strategy and chance. The chance mainly exists in the shuffle, right? That's creating the chance. And the strategy is pretty much everything else that happens. Some really popular games do not contain any element of chance at all, but rather they are driven completely by strategy. Chess is perhaps the best example, followed by games like Go and Othello which is also called reversi or reverse side. Checkers does not contain any, any element of chance either. Uh, how many of you are chess players here? You can just use the raise your hand feature. I'll hear the little beep go. There you go. We've got some chess players. Yeah, there's. I hear the beeps. So chess, there is no chance in chess. It's all strategy. Everything is, is on the board, clear as day. Both players can see what's going on. There's nothing random that's going to happen. There are variations of chess that people have invented that contain randomness in order to uh, introduce new challenges into the game. And you might be doing that too. Anybody here ever play Go? That's this one here. Yeah, I hear a hand going up. And Reversi is kind of like, uh, or Othello, there, it's two game, two, one game by two different names, uh, is kind of like a miniaturized version of this. Um, such games can be extremely challenging to master, while simpler versions of strategy-only games, such as Tic-Tac-Toe or Mancala, are mastered so quickly that every single game between experienced players must end in a draw or with a predictable result. 
Introducing an element of chance and expanding the grid, for example, can make tic-tac-toe a much more challenging and enjoying, enjoyable game. Has anybody here ever played a variation of tic-tac-toe that includes maybe a bigger grid or chance or something like that? Yeah. So you might be making one up soon. Uh, games that rely entirely on chance tend to be less popular because players feel less like they are playing the game and more as if they have just stumbled into a set of random occurrences over which they have no control and therefore little interest in the outcome. See, the that's the big uh, finger squishing me. It says me down there. That's life. For this reason, one interesting variation on the card game War is to allow players to look at their hands and select the cards they will discard. This introduces an element of strategy into the game, pitting each player's strategy against the chance that it will beat the other player's strategy or succumb to it by chance. From there, you could invent a whole new game. So imagine playing war. Anybody here ever played war? Anybody here never played war? I hope that wasn't for never. Uh, so war is this game where basically you get dealt half the deck or you know whatever... The, del the, the, the entire deck of cards is divided among all the players. And you just, uh, you hold the cards in your hand face down and you take the top one and you all flip it over at the same time. And whoever has the highest uh, card wins. And if two people have the same value card, like in the picture it shows a seven and a nine, but if both people had sevens, uh, actually no, in the picture you see that both people had an ace so then each person had to discard three cards face down. And then the next card was the, the new challenge. And whoever won wins that battle. So this person over here would have beat this person. But if you could look at your hand, you could decide which cards to get rid of. So that when you win a battle like this, you know that you're probably getting some not so great cards in the battle, right? And then you could introduce all kinds of more rules so that maybe there's an incentive to, uh, to go into battle sometimes and there's an incentive to avoid going into battle at other times. It's really up to you. There's no limit to how you can create uh, new games by introducing different strategies into already existing games. So that brings us to your first assignment. Uh, what I want you to do is basically... Um, we're going to circle back to this. Hang on a second. Let me see here. What did I say about this? The slide presentation contains an assignment which you will do in Teams, but will not be turned in or graded at this time. So, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Um, what I want you to do, and I will, uh, I guess I'll just keep recording. What I want you to do is to choose a simple game based entirely on either chance or strategy with which you are already familiar. This should be a game that you already have played a lot, you know all the rules, um, and, uh, and maybe you're even good at it, right? Maybe you even like this game. You don't have to like it, that's okay. But you can choose any game that is either all chance, 100% chance, or 100% strategy, not games that have a mixture of the two, okay? So here's a good example of uh, a game that is all strategy, um, oh no, sorry. Uh, yeah, like tic-tac-toe and Mancala are all strategy, right? I'm going to go ahead and edit that. All strategy. All strategy, right? Uh, all chance is war. All chance is bingo. Snakes and ladders or shoots and ladders is all chance, right? Um, so you're going to start with one of those games and you're going to modify the rules. You're going to add rules. You're going to take away rules. Uh, you know, maybe you're going to change the, the layout of the board, something like that. And um, you are going to uh, change the game so it becomes a mixture of strategy and chance. In as clear of terms as possible, you're going to write the rules as if you were explaining the game to someone who has never played it before. All right. And then uh, I give you some guidelines on how to explain the rules of a game. 
So first you have to clearly state what kind of game it is and how many people can play. For example, blackjack is a card game for two to eight players. By the way, blackjack requires a mixture of strategy and chance, so you can't use blackjack for this assignment. Then you're gonna clearly state the objective. That means the goals of the game. For example, the objective is to beat the dealer's hand by gaining less than or equal to 21 points. And then you're gonna clearly state supplementary rules. These are rules that you need to know in order to understand the objective. For example, in blackjack, the cards are equal to their face value. Face cards are equal to 10 and aces can be either one or 11, right? And then you're gonna clearly state how each player starts. For example, each player starts with one card and takes turns uh, betting on how they will do in the next hand. And then you're gonna get into gameplay and conditional rules uh, so like if this, then that. So for example, at the start of each hand, once bets are made, the dealer turns a single card, sorry, the dealer deals a single card to each player and then to him or herself. Then each player uh, has a chance to bet again and then to receive a second card. If they choose not to, then this happens. In the next round of betting, then this happens and then that happens, and blah, 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 blah. You should clearly state how each turn and the game is won. For example, the game ends when any player, including the dealer, has a hand that reaches but does not exceed 21, right? By the way, if you guys want to talk to somebody who is a really good blackjack player, somebody who actually got kicked out of a casino for playing this game too well, talk to all right? Uh, and lastly, I want you to name your new game. I want you to be creative. There are no strict guidelines on naming your new game, except that you must name it, and the name should be at the top of the document that you turn in. Uh, try and be creative. Don't like, don't call it like tic tac toe modified. Call it tic tac two. Ha! You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, he's really good at blackjack. If you ever want to know how to play blackjack really well, ask All right. Um, 